Okay, we're going to be talking about the high set uh, exam, and specifically, we're going to be looking at some algebra. And one of um, the topics when you study algebra that you're definitely going to want to know for the high set is this idea of graphing lines or linear equations. So this is just going to be a general review. Um, uh, definitely, I would not substitute this video for everything you need to know. So just want to caution you. But we're going to go, go over some big ideas that, uh, that you need to know for graphing lines. And I'll give you some other suggestions uh, ending in this video about how to really get deeper into this topic. But actually, let me just do this uh, right now. If you're new to my channel um, in my videos and you find out that you like my teaching style, hopefully you'll, you'll consider subscribing. If you do, hit that bell notification. I literally have hundreds of math videos. Um, my background is obviously teaching math, and I do a lot with adult uh, math education, high set, TAS, GED, etc., and a lot of other different type of videos as well that um, are going to really help you out uh, for the high set. So check that out. If you really want to get my advanced stuff and like a full comprehensive uh, high set math course, then I'm going to uh, suggest that you look at my um, high set uh, accelerator course. I'll leave a link in the description of this video, but that's a full comprehensive. I'll take you from, you know, basic skills all the way up. So that's a real comprehensive formal type course that, um, you know, you can check out at your leisure. But with that being said, let's get into this uh, concept of graphing lines. All right. So what am I talking about here? So in algebra or in mathematics in general, you'll probably see this, or maybe you've seen it before, and this is basically what we call an XY axis or Cartesian plane. There's a lot of different ways you can think about it, but basically it's a grid system. We have an X axis, this is what this line's called, and a Y axis. So hopefully this uh, looks familiar to most of you. Now, if you don't even know what this is, then you're going to have to even start at a more basic place than, than what I'm going to kind of get into. But, you know, let's just assume that uh, you kind of like, oh, yeah, I kind of seen this before. So that's great. So let's just talk about how this works real quick. So on the X axis, these are all the positive values. And then in this direction, these are all the negative values. So as you go more to the left, it becomes uh, less and less and less. As you go more to the right, it becomes more and more and more in value, increases in value. Now, in the y-axis, same thing. When you go up, you're increasing in value in a positive direction. And as you're going down, you're decreasing in value in a negative direction. And the, and the center here is called the origin. All right. So, for example, this point right here, uh, we could describe as 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Like, say, for example, 2, 3, okay, would be the location of this point. So I went 2 on the x and three on the Y. So every time you're describing the um, where a point is on this X, Y coordinate plane, what we do is we always put the X value first followed by the Y value. We call these ordered pairs. Ordered, let me write this out, pairs. Now let's just look at what that word means, right? There's a specific order. X first, then Y, and then we obviously we have two pieces of information. We have a pair of information. Okay, so order pairs or court or a coordinate or a point. Um, this is what we're talking about. Now, um, again, if you're not quite, you know, familiar with this, I mean, you understand what I'm saying, but you're like, uh, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that a little bit, then I'm going to really encourage you to probably take a look at my full course because you're going to, you know, have to build up your, there's a lot of things we need to kind of cover to get you to really master master this topic, okay? So just doing a real, real big picture overview of, of graphing lines, all right? Now, if you're with me so far, then that's great. So let's kind of move it forward, okay? Now, what we want to be able to do in um, algebra is we want to be able to take an equation. So let's take an equation, something like this. All right, so this is basically what we call a linear equation, right? That word L-I-N-E-R, linear equation. And if you kind of look at this root word, you have line. So one way to, to I like to uh, tell my students to think about this is, is that this is a line equation. Now, if you notice here, 
we have a y, okay, and so you have a y over here, right? And then we have an x, right, that it's involved in this equation, okay? So we have um, y and x, two variables, and we have an, an equal sign here, and we have some numbers. So this is one way you can spot a linear equation. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is that for every linear equation that we have, we have a respective line, okay? So this right here, we can actually graph an associated line for this particular equation. Now, sometimes we see the equation written in, in, in another kind of form. So it might look something like this, 2x minus y equals 5, okay? So this would be a basic, another type of linear equation, and it's going to have a particular line on the graph as well. So lines kind of come in different kind of so, uh, different formats, but not too many um, uh, different type of formats. But basically what you need to know <clears throat> is for the most part, and I'm, I am kind of, again, oversimplifying here just for the purposes of, a, of doing a review. But when you see an equation and you have an x and y in it to the first power with a number, then you're going to uh, be thinking, hey, I could actually graph this <clears throat> on an xy plane uh, with, with, with a particular line, okay? So you need to know how to do this is what I'm getting across, right? So we're talking about graphing linear equations. Now, an associated topic with this, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but let's say I have a line here, right? And let's say there's two points on the line. Let's call this the point. Let's make something up here. Negative 10, negative 3. Maybe this point is 2, 6. So I have two points on this line. Okay, so here's a line. And I, I know there's two. These two particular points are on this line. Okay, now remember, there's any number of points that are on this line. But I just happen to know that these two points are on this line. Another thing that you're going to want to know how to do, and I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I just want to bring it up because it is an associated topic, is, hey, I have my line. I have some points. I would like to know the equation, the a linear equation that goes with this line, okay? So I'm, I give you the line, all right, and I want you to figure out what the linear equation is. So this is what we call writing an equation of a line or finding the equation of a line. So that's what I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that, but I want to bring this up because sometimes students confuse this. These are two separate topics, okay? What we're going to be doing is doing this okay i'm going to give you let's kind of erase all this i'm going to give you a, a linear equation and i want you to graph the line okay so i'm going to give you the equation you give me the line the other process the other um question that uh, is for another video is here's the line you give me the equation okay that actually is a little bit more involved but um Again, I wanted to just cover that because students sometimes confuse the two in terms of uh, the processes. All right, so let's get into this now. So here is your linear equation. Now, you have some options, okay, on uh, how to graph any linear equation. And uh, as far as uh, uh, mathematics goes, you actually can graph anything using this one particular technique, okay? So I'm gonna basically give you two main techniques that you're gonna to need to know how to graph basic lines in algebra, okay, for the high set. The first is a table, all right? Now a table works for anything. I can give you any kind of mathematical equation and you can use a table of values, all right? So what that looks like is the following. Okay, we have a little x, we have a little y. Okay, this is a table. All right, this is how I can kind of construct one. And what we can do is we could put in any values we'd like for the x. Okay, so I'm going to use three simple values. Let's call this 0, 1, and 2. All right, so I make a, a table here, okay, an xy table, and I can put in any values I want for the x. Now, you can make up harder values. I could put in negative 10, I could put in negative 3.2. As long as you have three separate x values, and they don't even have to be three, they actually, you can actually get away with two, okay, values, but we want to at least do three or four, right? But I'm just, you know, giving you some idea. But if I said, pick three numbers to work with, 
in math, anytime you're allowed to choose, always uh, select the easiest numbers. And what are the easiest numbers to work with? Zero. I love zero. Zero is a great number to work with. Uh, okay, if you can't have a zero, pick one. One is obviously a super easy number to work with, and then you just move up the uh, ladder there and pick two. So zero, one, two, this will uh, serve our purposes. Okay, so let's see how a table of value works. All right, so what we're going to do for a table is we need to complete the table. I need to get, given the x values here, okay, we're going to plug them and plug them in where it says x, and that is going to help us get the respective y values. And I'll show you, I'll show you what we're going to do with this in a second. Okay, so let me erase this here. Got some room to look at this. So the first technique is the table. All right, so this is how it works. So when x is 0, we want to know what y is. So I'm going to plug in a 0. I'm going to replace that x with a 0. So let's actually do that down here. So I want y equals 2 times x, but I'm going to let x equal to 0. That's what this means when you have a 0 underneath this column. So if I put a 0 plus 5, right, because this was y equals 2x plus 5. So this is y equals 2x plus 5. But for right now, I'm going to let x equal to 0. That's what this means when you have this 0 underneath the x uh, column here in this table. So now I'm just going to do the math. What's 2 times 0? Zero? 0, right? So y is going to be equal to 0 plus 5 or 5. So when x was 0, y turned out to be 5. So I need to fill out my table. When x is 0, y is 5. Now what does that mean? Okay, It means that the point 0, 5, this ordered pair, that point is on this line. All right, so I can go to 0. Let's go 0, 5. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, that's it. Say right here. I mean, I'm just kind of, um, this is not the most accurate uh, grid. I have one on my screen here. But let's just, you'll, you'll see how this works out. So I have 0, 5 right there, okay? That means this point is on this line. Well, that's great. I need at least two points, right, to form, to be able to sketch the line. So let's go get another point. Okay. Now, if you understand this, maybe you want to go ahead and actually do this on your own, okay? So you can do, you could get the points for 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and figure it out when x is 1. So it's going to be 2 times what? 1, okay? Because we're going to let x equal to 1 plus 5, right? So when I do that, when x is 1, okay, y turns out to be what? 2 times 1 is 2 plus 5, y is equal to 7, all right, so when x is 1, y is 7, so I have the point 1, 7. So now I can go over here, 1, 7 is like up here. All right. Now, for all intended pur uh, purposes, I have enough to sketch my line. All right, this basically is it, right? So the line is going to go through those two points. That's why I need at least two points. Now, but why would you want to do another point? And you're like, well, I'm done. I got the line. Okay, I graphed the line to this equation. Yes, technically, but here's the deal. You always want to do at least one other point to make sure that you didn't mess up on one of these other points. In other words, if uh, let's say you did your third point and it turned out to be over here, there's a problem, right? So your line could either be this way or this way. All the points should line up. So if you if you do another point, it's a it's like a check. You're just making sure you're validating. You're verifying that everything's, you know, good to go. So two points is not enough. Three or four points is, is, is better. All right, so let's do this last point here. And hopefully it all lines up. So we're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to let x equal to 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 5. So y equals what? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 5. So y is equal to 9. So when x was 2, y turned out to be 9. So I'm going to put my little 9 here in the table. So I got 2, 9. So let's go to my little uh, uh, grid here. So I have 1, 2. And if this was 7, 8, 9, yes, I can be right here. 2, 9, and it all lines up nice and perfect. Okay? So this is one way that you can graph anything. I would definitely encourage you to... At a minimum, if you didn't know anything else, okay, for the high set in terms of graphing lines, make sure you know how to complete a table of values 
Um, and again, just pick super simple uh, uh, numbers if you're given a choice. Sometimes you're given values that are already kind of um, there for you and you have to calculate out, but this is a real basic skill. So tables work for anything in uh, mathematics. For example, if I told you to graph this right here, y equals 3x squared minus x plus 9, well, this is a quadratic which forms something called a parabola, okay, something like this. You're like, well, how can I do that? Well, even if you don't technically know how to do it, you can just fill out a bunch of table. You can make a table, just do a bunch of values, and basically it's connect the dots. I don't know if you guys remember. Probably uh, if you're um, old enough to, where you didn't grow up constantly around video games when we had to do <laughs> – when, when life was much boring, but I think better uh, as well. We used to have those games, right, like connect the dots. It would be like here, a bunch of dots right here, and you would like – draw and you would be like oh okay i see the the figure or whatnot basically this is the idea right you're playing connect the dots but if i want you to graph this you have to connect the dots the first thing you need to do is go get the dots right to get the dots uh to so you can see the figure you're going to have to complete the table okay so you're going to make the table do it in the same process um, plug in the x value calculate it out for the y value and then just make your dots right here and then plot them and then kind of connect the dots all right i don't want to get too far ahead of myself but again a table is absolutely essential okay now the reason why there uh, a table is not the only way we want to graph okay i'm gonna i'm gonna leave these points up here no i'll leave them up here uh, we'll get rid of the table here for a second so the table takes uh, takes some time to calculate, all right? Now, with linear equations, lines, especially if they're in this particular form, okay, we call this the y equals mx plus b form, okay? When, a, when a, an equation is written in this particular format where there's a y by itself and a number in front of the x plus another number, then we, we could, there's a, uh, a real direct way we can graph these lines, okay? So I'm going to show you this real quick. And uh, again, this is just a quick review, right? So hopefully you're like, yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh, and if you're like, oh, this is interesting, and, you know, and you're like, okay, I kind of get it, you definitely need to do more studying, okay? But if you already know how to do this, this is just kind of um, strengthening your comprehension in this area. All right, so here's our line. What you can do when you have a line in y equals mx plus b form is you can go to this number first, okay, this b value. Here it's plus 5. This is something called the what we call the y-intercept. It's the point where our line crosses the y-axis, okay? So the y-intercept is where where does the graph cross the y-axis? It, it does it at plus 5. In this case, it's 0, 5. So you can see here, we already have that point, 0, 5. So I would just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the y-axis, and I already have that point from my table. Right? I just happened to get it because I was using a, a 0 as a value, but you can see, boom. Okay, so actually, let's do this here. Let me kind of do it like this. Let's see if we can squeeze this in here. Here's my X, and here's my Y. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put my first point, 5 on, my, on the Y axis. That's one point, okay? So here. Now, once you've got that point, you go to the 2. You go to the number in front of the X, which is 2. And you always look at these numbers as fractions, all right? So this is 2 over 1. This is what we call M which is the same thing as the slope of the line. This is a whole other conversation in, a, in and of itself. But the slope of a line is basically the rise over the run. Now, what does that mean? The run is how much a line goes out, goes out this way, and the rise is how much the line rises. So for every line, you know, you can, let's say I have a line right here. The line, you can kind of put like a little triangle underneath it, and this would be, the I'm sorry, this would be the run and this would be the rise of the line. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so in this case, the rise over the run means the for every one the line's going to go out. Okay, for every one it goes out to the goes out to the right, it will rise up two. So from one it goes up two. 
All right, now let's think about that. What coordinate is this right here? If it went out one, okay, let's just put this right here. This five was what? Zero, five is that point. So if it went out one, that's one, right? But if it went up two, starting from five, it's at seven, one, seven. That should look familiar to you, right? That's the point one, seven, and this is the point zero, five. And I can just basically connect the two lines, and then I have the same line. You know, these are sketches. They're, they should be parallel, but they're not because I'm just kind of sketching. But what I'm telling you is that when you have a uh, linear equation written in this format, there's a much more direct way we can graph lines. So we're looking for efficiencies. And there's even another one or two methods that you can use to uh, graph linear equations. Now, along this topic, there's other things that you're going to want to know. You're going to want to know about linear models, okay? They, so it's kind of like word problems that involve x, y um, axes and 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 lines, and, and, and uh, you're going to want to know if two lines are parallel to one another, and a lot of different type of things. So this is just the beginning re um, overview of this topic of graphing lines. Again, I haven't even gotten into how to write the equation of a line, okay? Uh, so what what's the whole idea? What's the point of this video? Let's call this a wrap. The video, you know, my goal with these, these things is, hey, I can't condense in you know, and teach you a one year's worth of algebra in, you know, 15 minutes. But what I can do is uh, highlight big, important concepts. And if you just understand this, you know, you've already increased your, your mathematics knowledge, okay? But uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. So graphing lines is definitely something you're going to want to uh, know for the high set. Again, I have a lot of different videos, mathematics videos on slope, graphing lines in more detail. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you do hit that bell notification. If you're really, truly looking for a complete course where your skills get built up one at a time, um, you know, so you can have, you know, a lot of confidence for the high set, then I'm going to encourage you to take a look at my uh, course. I'll leave, the, again, the link in the description of the video. Um, hey, if you like the video, I definitely would appreciate a thumbs up, and then leave me feedback. It's the only way I know how I'm doing, and also um, through your comments and whatnot gives me ideas to make uh, future videos. But I'm making videos all the time, so I'm really passionate about helping people out to pass these exams. It's really important that if you don't, have your high set GED task or whatever the case is, you definitely need to do it. And I focus on math because math is the number one area where people struggle uh, with uh, the most. And I will say uh, that, you know, you got to take the math uh, serious on these exams. You do need to know high school level algebra and geometry. Okay. And so if your strategy is, well, I'll just kind of wing it or I'll just kind of hope and take the test and kind of see what happens then you're doing yourself a disservice. You really need, need to learn the math uh, and apply it. But that's a good thing, okay? Learning is a good thing. Make an investment in your education, pass these exams, and move on and do great things in life. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time, and have a great day.